Let's check in with Joseph Lindsley in Ukraine. Hi, this is Joe Lindsley, American reporting in Ukraine on Chicago's WGN Radio every single weekday of Russia's full-scale invasion, except for today. Uh, right when I was about to, to do sound check, all of a sudden, all of my internet options, and I have many, everything shut down uh, during the time that I was supposed to speak on the radio. Who knows? I mean, this could be, is this a cyber attack? Lately, there have been many infrastructure problems and power problems uh, throughout Ukraine because of Russia's sustained attacks. Uh, but this seemed very precisely targeted. Uh, and I'm pretty angry because I never, I never take a day off from reporting uh, from Ukraine. This is both so Americans can understand what's happening here, so you know how your, you know, American money and weapons are being used and and invested here in Ukraine, uh, and so you, the world can hear about the heroic sacrifices of Ukrainians. And and this is where freedom is being defined because people will die for the idea of freedom here. Uh, they refuse to flee their cities even under missile attacks, and I seek to share that with the world. Uh, here's the news I would have reported uh, on WGN Radio with Bob Surratt had my internet worked. Uh, as we see, power uh, and electricity are becoming more of an issue in Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainian F-16 pilots have completed their training in Denmark and France, but there's still a big question as to when F-16s, if ever, will arrive in Ukraine. And Russians are bringing more gear into that Belgorod region north of Kharkiv. And we also see this astounding thing. Russia is now claiming as its own territorial waters of Lithuania and Finland, and the Swedes believe that Russia has designs on the Gotland Island, a major Swedish island in the Baltic Sea, and today would have been the day of the start of Zelensky's second term, or most likely the term of a new president if there had been no full-scale war here in Ukraine, and I'll explain these stories now. Joe, Joe, little Joe Lindsley. Joe Lindsley is quickly becoming an American treasure in broadcasting. We have the news uh, from, from Denmark and France that Ukrainians, Ukrainian pilots have completed their F-16 training. And so everyone's saying, well, when will these F-16s arrive? It's more than two years into this full-scale war. And there still is a big question whether Washington, which controls, uh, no, matter who, no matter who donates the F-16s, no matter who pays for it, Washington controls where they go uh, because they're produced in America. And there's a big question whether or not Washington wants to send any F-16s to Ukraine until there's some kind of partition or negotiated deal uh, with Russia. And perhaps this explains why they're always saying, oh, in three months time, uh, and they keep kicking the can down the road. So that's a big question. But the pilots seem ready to go, uh, ready to fly these jets. Meanwhile, Russians are bringing more gear into Belgorod, uh, that region uh, from which they've made a, a new incursion into the Kharkiv region the past weeks. And that region from which uh, Kharkiv city is attacked uh, day and night uh, all the time, including Kharkiv city. And this brings up a major sticking point. Uh, the White House still refuses to give Ukraine permission to hit Russian military targets within Russia, even those places right across the border, just a few miles from Kharkiv City, from which Russia can launch missiles upon the city. Uh, no American produced munitions or anything from America can be used to stop the Russians. They have to, the Ukrainians have to wait until the Russians enter their territory. Major General Patrick S. Ryder, the Department of Defense Press Secretary, confirmed this yesterday. He said, our policy hasn't changed. We are focused on providing Ukraine with capabilities that it needs to defend itself within its own sovereign territory. But that means that some of that sovereign territory, like Kharkiv, remains vulnerable because Ukrainians can't attack the Russians just miles away across the border. Today would have been the start of President Zelensky's second term or the term of a new president. Ukrainians, uh, unlike Russia and many other countries, never re-elect a president. Uh, since, since the breakup of the Soviet Union, Ukraine has had a new president every five years. And had there been no full-scale war, it's very likely there would be a new person uh, taking office as president today. And this is it's, it's an occasion to look back and say, you know, 2019, Ukrainians really did not want another oligarch as president. In many ways, that, that campaign in 2019 came down to uh, there was a major rock star that was running. And then, of course, there was the actor, Vladimir Zelensky, uh, the person Ukrainians in the end chose to be president. And it's important to note that in, in President Zelensky's campaign for president, he actually he made a point of the showing that he was going to Ukrainian language classes. He's a native Russian speaker. He comes from the city of Kriviri, which, because of colonial Moscow policies, was a Russian-speaking city for so long. And so he was actually making a point of uh, learning Ukrainian when he was running for president, a very different scenario from, from what we see now today. And President Zelensky was seen as, a, as someone who wanted reconciliation with Russia, uh, who was willing to negotiate. Uh, all of that, of course, changed on February 24th, 2022. And a lot of the Russian propaganda ignores this very fact that President Zelensky 
uh, was of the camp of people that was trying to negotiate uh, with Russia rather than preparing uh, for, for this full-scale invasion. And then, of course, we had the big news uh, in the Baltic Sea. Russian authorities have announced that they are changing the sea borders of Russia, which means they are claiming Lithuanian and fi Finnish water as their own. This is a big test of NATO now that Finland is in NATO. Uh, and and it's, it's a very extremely bold, uh, I mean, it's, it's a concerning move for many. In fact, the commander-in-chief of the Swedish Armed Forces uh, said that he believes that Russia has its eyes on Gotland, which is a large Swedish island in the Baltic Sea. Uh, many people go there in the summertime, especially. I, I've been on the Swedish Baltic coast. It's a lovely place. And uh, the commander in chief of the Swedish Armed Forces says he believes the Russians have their designs on that island. It's very strategic, even though Sweden's in NATO. Uh, so we do see this aggressive nature of threats uh, from Russia. The Swedish prime minister made a video today of support, uh, announcing a greater support package for Ukraine, including military support. And, you know, it's notable, as I was watching that speech of the Swedish prime minister, you know, the, the Rus people who created what is now Kiev, uh, they came from what is, uh, what is now Stockholm. Uh, Rus means the rowers, the Rilsi. Uh And so really there, there, there's a Nordic roots uh, to, the, to the birth of Ukraine. And they sailed down to what is now Kiev and they created the principality of the Kievan Rus, uh, which, is, which is, that was the precursor to modern day Ukraine. It was many centuries later when Mongols and warlords in, in this outpost in the forest, which became Moscow, decided to make themselves, they wanted this history of the Rus people, this wonderful history of Kiev, and from far, far away, they declared themselves the princes of all Rus, uh, but they didn't have that direct connection. They were, they were trying to, to, make, to get that mantle. So there's a great connection between Sweden uh, and, and, and the history of uh, the founding of Kiev. And I want to note uh, in that little city of, a little, you know, sort of town of Azum in Kharkiv region, which so frequently comes under fire, uh, my friends from the Maker's Coffee House, uh, it's a chain, a small, you know, about five coffee houses in Kharkiv City called Maker's, a uh, wonderful place, great coffee. They have just opened a new branch in the city of Azum. Uh, most people, you know, would not want to open a new branch of their a business in a, in a, not only in a war-torn country, but in one of the cities that's most heavily hit. But they want to serve the people who remain there. They want to serve the volunteers who go there. Uh, so Makers uh, had its grand opening uh, in, in, in that heavily hit city of Azum, a uh, great act of defiance. Uh, so this has been Joe Lindsley talking to you. Well, not today on WGN Radio, but still sharing the truth here from Ukraine. You can follow our work at ukrainianfreedomnews.com. I hope to catch you tomorrow in our report on WGN, which, of course, we share online across all different platforms afterward. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. Let's eat this